Alright, so here we are. We got our vlog. This is going to be the second episode and of course, I figured we might as well, we started at Tease Me, we might as well kind of go back into time and how I even got to Indianapolis. And so, here we are. We're going to take a little quick tour. Not really tour, but this is kind of like my everyday walk coming into the arena from start to finish. You know, I get to come in, get to come to Banker's Life Fieldhouse and yeah. Take y'all to the locker room. Let's go. So of course, one of the things that I think is really cool about coming in is coming down the hallway, the first thing you see our oh, man, da 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 da. But if you look at the hall, like on the wall, we always have a whole bunch of pictures. So this is after we won, we got to go see the one and only Barack Obama. But at the same time, one of our local college teams had just won. So cool pictures, got some stuff from the college days for Stephanie White, the one and only. All types of pictures. It takes you down, kind of takes you down memory really lane. Yeah, so many cool memories, so many cool things. I think it's always a good feeling when you get to come into the locker room. And we're gonna wait for the doors to open so we can get in. Da 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 da! So of course, coming into the weight room, the coolest thing I think is obviously always the ball. The ball rack, being able to grab a ball, come in, got to get it in the hands. We're going to head to the locker room. Yeah, I mean, a sheet everywhere. And then some past summit. We all know, just legendary. Legendary. Well, welcome to Catch's Corner. Woo woo. You know, we talked a lot about coming into the arena and just being able to be a part of the FIBA organization for as long as I have and um, every day making that trek up the ramp, down the hallway. Of course, we've had quite a few changes that have happened within the building and quite a few changes that have happened in the locker room, but every day coming in and this is like, this was always dubbed Catch It Corner. So my spot is from here all the way over you see this sharp angle right here 90 degree and straight over and if anybody got in my area i'd have to like push the chairs out push all the little stuff you know people messy next to me try to push stuff in my area no 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 no, no. it doesn't work out like that but i think you know just going back and and looking at being here um the biggest growth for me has always been leadership and you know i remember you know, always kind of growing up in my thing, my motto, my my was always just follow me. Whatever I do, do. <laughs> you know, I didn't really talk much. I wasn't a vocal leader. I was just one of those visual visual leaders that you just watch and hopefully would emulate. For me, it really wasn't until 2002, 2004. You know, being a part of the USA Olympic team and seeing players, and I I always shout out Don Staley because 
she was the first player that literally showed me and taught me how to be a, a leader, how to lead by example, but even more importantly, how to lead vocally. And you know, you think about most kids starting out from the beginning, right? They in, in middle school, you're really good. So what happens? The coach makes you the captain of a team. Start playing AAU. You're the best player on the team. What happened? Coach makes you the captain of the team. Get to high school, play. You're the best player on the team. What happened? Coach makes you the best player. So coach makes you the leader of the team. Get to college. I was fortunate. You know, I had Shamika Hold, Claude Kelly, Jolly Harper. Now, you know, in front of me, they were the captain. But when they left, you know, of course, we had kind of some other players that stepped up, but Pat really relied on me to help lead and, you know, the thing that we did um, from the defensive standpoint, so you become a leader. Get to the pros, sat out my first year, tore my ACL senior year, so got to, you know, got up here to Indiana, sat out that first year, but second year, I'm like, okay, you know, my rookie season, I'm looking for somebody else to lead, and, you know, right off the bat, because you're the best player, players look to you to, to lead them. And, you know, I, I, I really struggled as a player just being being a vocal leader. And I feel like I was always the first one to be in, in the gym. I was always the last one to leave the gym. But even with that, not being able to use my voice to demand and keep my teammates accountable for the things that they were supposed to do. So through that, I feel like I've learned a lot about leadership. And, you know, I continue to, to be able to have the opportunity, not just in what I did as a basketball player, but even more so now on the other side being able to, to continue to lead and continue to talk about, you know, just things that I have learned through the leadership realm. And one of the cool things is through all of that, I get to do a lot of speaking engagement. You know, I talked a little bit, I think in the first vlog about having, you know, somebody in my corner that really pushed me to do things that were outside of my comfort zone. And the you know, first year when I was hurt, got into like speaking, speaking at school and then, you know, I, did not want to do it at first, but kind of, you know, got the pressure from our community relations director, like, no, this is something that we need you to do. And I'm so thankful that she did because that is what I do now. And so it's helped me fine tune myself as a leader and being able to do things like do as I do, but say, you know, do as I say, and then I also will do as I say too. So like there's a lot of kind of whatever I do, I'm gonna, whatever I ask you to do, I'm gonna do too. But um, I get the opportunity to do a lot of speaking. And one of the cool things, got to speak earlier this year, and I talked a lot about spreading your wing. You know, I think a lot of us, and my husband made a comment while we were on vacation just about seeing birds that have wings that can't fly. And it made me correlate that to people. How many of us live our lives and we're just like those birds. We have wings and there are places that God wants to take us, but we don't go there because we don't spread our own wing. And so I, I love to use acronym and I did, um, I did a speech off of the acronym for SOAR, S-O-A-R. And I'm not going to go through all of it, but the gist of it was spread your wings or to SOAR. So the S for is spread your wings. <laughs> hey. Spread your wings, just being able to spread your wings and being able to get to new height. The O was open your door. And I could have used the, open the door, but I said open your door because I feel like we've always heard the, the statement, you know, whatever God has for you, nobody can take away. And I look at that as I definitely believe in that. But then also like my door is not the same as your door, the same as somebody else's door. And so when I say open your door, whatever my door is right in front of me, like that's the door that I need to open for this opportunity and this opportunity and that opportunity. So spread your wing, open your door to A, always be ready. You know, think about game shot, always ball come boom, got catch and shoot, shot clock one and die, you always gotta be ready. And I, you know, like that's the life. There are gonna be things that are gonna happen, things that are gonna come and you gotta be ready. You gotta be ready to shoot, you gotta be ready to catch, you gotta be ready to defend. You know, um, whatever area of your life, you have to be ready. And then of course, my R would reach for the stars. Not only catch the stars with the foundation, but always realizing that, you know, we always talk about reaching and reaching and reaching. Um, and I tucked down a story about my brother, my little brother, you know, sitting at the side of the pool and 
he's reaching for a ball that was in the pool. And as he reached, the ball kept backspinning further and further away until he fell into the pool. And jumped in the pool and I jumped in with everything on, phone in my pocket and everything. I remember I got up and I'm like, oh man, my phone got wet. Then I'm like, oh shoot, wait, my brother's okay. That's, you know, he didn't, he didn't know how to swim. But it made me think about life. Because the very next day, he did the same thing, but he got the ball. And how many times, the first time we reach and the ball keeps spinning away or an opportunity keeps spinning away, we stop going after it because it's like, oh, maybe that wasn't my door. But maybe sometimes you have to work a little bit harder. And so being able to reach for the star, being able to reach for your opportunity, and I think we all know which ones are for us and which ones aren't for us, but using the acronym and, and being able to go through you know, reaching for your stars and, and going through SOAR, I feel like it is uh, the way that I live my life. You know, my, I'm definitely a daredevil when it comes to opportunities now. You know, now I'm willing like, hey, you know what, let me try this. And I did the Red Bull Air Race, hey, why not? <laughs> that was crazy, but I did it. And so, you know, I think just being able to, at some, t at some point and sometimes being able to step outside your comfort zone to try new things because you never know what type of opportunity will come from that. And so I think just to end this, you know, leadership is something that has become a part of my life and something that I continue daily to learn about. Um, you know, through SOAR, through watching other people, through reading a lot of books, you know, something that I enjoy just kind of hopefully one day, you know, I'll go down in history too as somebody that was a great leader, not just with our team here with the Fever, but the team on the other side and, you know, the team over at Tease Me, the Catch the Stars team, through speaking, um, through everything that I do, just being able to continue to be a great leader. So that's my vlog. And that's my time. I need you to spread your wing, open your door, always be ready, reach for the star. And even more importantly, I just need you to be you. So until the next time, I also need you to let me know if there's any topics that you would like me to talk about. This vlog I did and I want to do to be able to relate and to be able to stay connected to all the fans. So I need you to send some topics. Send me something that you'll be interested in us talking about. We're going to continue to go around the city of Indianapolis and, and beyond and, and uh, take some of these vlogs. But... Thank you for joining and we will see you next time. One, two, three.